So, um, does that kind of cover a little bit about, does that kind of answer your question about yeah. who we are yeah. and Motivation. why we care? <laughs> yeah. um, and we absolutely, when, when we have thought about how to do balloons before we met you guys, we absolutely saw them as another, as a stepping stone, mm -hmm. as a gateway towards yeah. CubeSats, and CubeSats are obviously a gateway towards larger operations on orbit, so. Um, like I said, technological, technological driver. Is, yeah, is for a sure. Important phrase yeah. that always comes up. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the next question, though, getting back to the walking through the initial questions, is it's phrased, "How will it be used?" But basically, it's, um, "How does it work? Um, what are, What are you going to do with it?" So we we build these balloons. What are, What do we do when when we have them? Okay. Um, are you speaking like? Just us specifically, or, or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, it's we, you, got, you can only answer for your own experience. Yeah. But okay. Um, um, here, is that okay with you? Just, all of us can do it. Sorry, I'm 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 sorry, i programmatic kind of things we do. Yeah, but, but specifically, um, so for this program, um, we have the near space environment is um, kind of dipping your feet into space, near space, or space conditions like orbital conditions and things like that. So um, when we're talking um, a near vacuum, I mean, it's about 1% of atmosphere, so it's not even near vacuum, I should say, but uh, low pressure regime, high radiation regimes, uh, it's um, 60 times of, of um, uh, radiation counts than ground level. Um, temperatures typically in excess of negative 60 degrees uh, Celsius um, for extended periods of time. Um, so, like, all these things kind of add up that um, we can. For engineering, so you know, you know STEM, right? Yep, yep, yep absolutely. All right, yeah. another acronym. I just want to make sure everybody's mm -hmm. on board. So, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, I've heard it said that E is silent <laughs> in a lot of schools. Uh, and that's the thing. And see, so it's so given what I just threw out with some of the conditions we experienced with high altitude ballooning, which is very foreign to many students or many people that are interested in this. Uh, there are challenges with that, you know. Um, just the simplest things come off, off the um, shelf sometimes are not a solution to dealing with environments like this. So it helps for us. Um, it's a good chance to have an engineering challenge for those new to engineering, for you know, students or maybe volunteers. Um, engineering in conditions that are you know, not uh, uh, typical. Gotcha. And so right there, just without any development or anything else, you yeah. can say it's an engineering challenge. Um, and, then and, and ultimately what we're talking about is the ability to fly, this provides the ability to fly payloads mm -hmm. you know, in the airspace, yeah. Yeah. small. Yeah, if I'm getting too specific, just. No, that's all right. I think this is good stuff, but I'm going to try to, yeah. I'm going to try to rescope okay. a little bit, right? Th this, um, the HAB, provides a platform to uh, carry, what, scientific payloads, right? Scientific and technology uh, and driven payloads. Uh, and uh, yeah. sometimes we're just testing. Engineering. Yeah, exactly. Payloads to a near space environment. Um, and then uh, these payloads, are, they're they're relatively small, and the duration is on yeah. the order of a couple hours um, at most. And uh, well, at most, there's adjustments you can make for right. that. But um, usually, a typical flight's a couple hours. Um, and the well, one, once again, one of the payload restrictions without FAA regulation, which uh, you know, approval. Which is much easier. It is a six pound maximum payload weight. So is that for the whole balloon or is that? The whole system weigh 12 pounds. Okay. The uh, indi Any individual unit of the payload has to be six pounds max. Or can be six pounds max. Now you can have larger, but then you have to um, 
contact the FAA, you have to um, give them a flight plan, and um, it, it becomes much more complex. And so mm -hmm. it's easier just to avoid. Um, oh, and I will send you the FAA regulations. How about that? And what's the right term for that? What kind of flights are those? Are they're not unregulated? They're because mm. there's still regulations there. For yeah. Um, it's a below minimum FAA um, requirement or FAA notice. Uh, these are that if you can phrase yeah, it in a yeah, better yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no technical term for it. Uh, you're, there, well, Mike, let me double check. Say without uh, for flights without FAA notice requirements. Yes, there, there you go. All right. So I think that kind of captures that question, though. I think so. Um, so what features does it need to have? When one goes to goo a balloon, mm -hmm. what kind of things is it going to have to be able to do to successfully go up and come back? Uh, are you saying like components? Uh, behaviors, features more like behaviors. It needs to. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go back to the shepherd. It. We've got all these answers. So, um, so like when we we're talking about a test stand, uh, we talked about how it need it need to be easy to to set up and tear down because we're going to take it to events and we don't. It shouldn't be an ordinary process for that. It should be compact and shippable because we need to be able to share it with other users. Uh, it has to provide a stable base to host, the, to actually run the motors mm -hmm. on, things like that. So it's that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, you know, stop me if I'm yep. not really That's all right. giving we're, the answer you're looking for. But it, um, I guess it, it has to be um, safe. Uh, that's, you know, one of the things that part of the FAA regulation, mm -hmm. they'll send you uh, a, a safe flight. I mean, you are sending things through airspace. Um, you have to make sure to know all the safety requirements. Um, it's hel very helpful to be very flexible on launches. Uh, so meaning um, you can, you know, uh, change maybe some payload specs. Uh, it, it, flexibility is actually really helpful. Um, uh, for weight requirements, you might find you're overweight and you have to, like, trim some things. So, you know, don't be, unless you've done um, you'd be surprised how much things yep. change as you like, out of the lab. Um, then, um, and also flight conditions can really change. Uh, you have to be flexible to that. Um, high winds are always very difficult. Sometimes it's really scary. Yeah. <laughs> um, is this sort of... Yeah, absolutely. That's okay. absolutely the kind of stuff. Um, uh, it has to be trackable. Oh, oh yeah, okay. I would assume it needs to provide for a soft landing. Ah, yes, there you go. Okay, so this is that you probably could ask ask these questions better than I can make them up. <laughs> well, and, and that's why we're working on this together. Is yeah. you know, we've gone through this process a couple of times now, <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. but don't have the experience of the balloon. I expect a lot mm -hmm. of give and take like this. Um, and. Uh, A uh, mechanism to prevent entanglement. Is that too like of the balloon with the? Is that too specific for for this? Uh, no, yeah, I don't think so. Well, if you're talking big picture um, component things, I'm. Mean, We're gonna get into that in yeah. mock diagram. Okay, I yeah. think that that's probably part of what makes sure you have a soft safe landing. Yeah, that's a safe and get, kind of get, thing. Getting yeah. getting rid of the balloon is part of what is required probably to get a okay. soft landing. But that's a uh, it's absolutely a good point. We're Uh, and it has to be able to carry the payloads, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to. Let's see. Oh, you know that is a concern. Um, if you have, if you're near, for example, with your max weight, 12 pounds, um, you know, good. I really suggest um, like a 1500 gram or above balloon. And so you know there there are balloon yeah. choices, for example, in those. Yeah. Um, obviously, they're more pricey the larger they are. So you know you obviously want to. Um, um, be as efficient as possible with that. If you have a light payload, you can go for a lot smaller balloons. So, and then 
the other thing I imagine is you need to be able to set it up in a fairly. Your setup, you, you need to be pretty flexible in where you set up too. Um, yes, like location scouting actually, launch scouting stuff like that is um, quite important. Um, we have the place that we always do it from typically, but we have launched from other places. Um, like open field launches are a whole different dynamic than if you do have a hangar like you've seen. Yeah. And there are definitely concerns about that, so. Is it what um, the hangar provides you uh, just protection Shelter. until you're ready yeah, to launch? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, um, so you're not fighting the winds yeah. while you're inflating the winds and exactly. things like that. Hey, Luke. Recording. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Maybe it's all part rough. of history. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, Luke's going to join us in the flight tomorrow. Oh, excellent. Um, and then uh, when we we run the payloads are carried up to like what around a hundred, between like ninety and a hundred thousand feet something yeah, like that yeah um, yeah that's that's a good ballpark so what I've got is has to be able to operate safely in flight. The operations processes need to be flexible. And we've got some examples of the things that you need to be that can cause a need to be flexible. The balloon itself needs to be trackable, needs to provide for a soft landing, and it has to be able to carry payloads to between 90 and 100,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And did you? Wait, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. Did you okay. say um, and carry a payload weight maximum of 12 pounds? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, yeah, yeah. Let's see. For example, with a thousand gram balloon, you're probably not going to get 12 pounds. Very good. Or I guess you can phrase it like appropriate. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yield for, uh, for your payload. Did you get the um, that other guide sent? From the FAA regulations. Yeah, I've seen them in my inbox. Cool. Okay. All right. I think that feels like a pretty good answer to that question. That feels like about the same scope we did for Shepard. Yeah. Um, and then what features does it need to have maybe later? So this is maybe even beyond where you guys are at. Um, are there things that it'd be nice if the balloon was able to do? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you I know, can, the more I you can, guys I get can. into like launches and stuff where you start there talking are, about raccoons, like, yeah, there are about interactive command, like command and telemetry stuff while mm -hmm. the balloon's flying, other than where the hell it is. Yeah. Okay. I can give you. This is sort of like already our wish list. Uh, Excellent. So we've there's a bunch of uh, progress we've and lack of progress we've made on certain ones of these. So in no order of yep. Progress. Um, controlled descent system. Uh, if with a parafoil kite. Um, we want to be able to, and we can, um, to work on it. We can actually use parafoil kite, like a ram, air ram yep, uh, yep. kite, to um, have a controlled descent where we can either and target a very specific. Parafoil. Um, yeah. Yep. It, yep. It's. I just want to make sure I yeah. got that word right. Yeah. Um, and that way we can actually target a landing or. Uh, also, you can, um, for example, block out certain areas. I mean, you're still a slave to the wind, you know, um, yeah. on the way up especially. Um, and so you still have only so much control on uh, controlled descent. So if we you block out, uh, um, say, these are no-go landing areas, it comes down, you can actually have a you know, GPS in there. I think I'm getting kind of specific. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. you can, you know, it, when my point is that you can actually avoid hazards um, in the descent. Um, that's uh, exciting. Another, we worked on it a little bit. Um, we've done some, and uh, happy to help them out. Cool. Uh, another thing is um, live telemetry, two-way telemetry. So we can, um, one of the things we'd like to do is, for example, if we find um, some problem, some reason, we can just send a cut down um, signal to it. Come right now, out. we're only receiving. Yeah. Uh, Plus, we could also, and also, we're only really receiving um, location information, flight um, information like that. We want to be able to get live, possibly um, imagery, maybe um, 
Slow Scan TV video. Um, also live uh, data. You know, we're, we're logging all the data up there, but it would be nice to get it fed down the line. So this is um, this involves a whole different communication system than we have now. Yeah. Um, one of the things we have kind of achieved, and we're achieved enough that we're now in the improvement stage, is a uh, um, stabilized platform system. Um, and there are definite design improvements that can happen with that. Um, we have some on the drawing board, but um, so because with a, I think what you saw was the payload chain, yes, where it's balloon, parachute, and then all the, thing, yep, yep, which means you get a lot of rotation out of it. Um, sure, and you know, for video, it's really nauseating, but yes. also for data. I mean, if you want to um, do any targeted observations, astronomical observations, or any other sort of like, um, it helps if you can point somewhere yes, exactly. and stay fixed on your target. Yeah, exactly. And not see it once every revolution. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. Um, one RPS is not a fun you know, <laughs> to collect data. <laughs> so, uh, and we've made a lot of improvements on that. Um, well, I mean, is that enough to kind of... Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's okay. great. I mean, if there's yeah. something else, I'm happy to capture it, but that's um, part of this process is to be working in the moment but seeing where you're headed mm -hmm. so that as you start to if we were, instead of capturing design, we were doing design. Mm -hmm. If you had opportunities to make decisions that were affordable, that you could afford decision A or decision B, and A led to continuing down the path you want to be on, and B blocked the path you want to be on, mm -hmm. you would clearly favor A. And even if there's a cost differential, you may choose to favor A, and you need to know these kind of things about where you're headed to be able to make those decisions. And that's why this question lives in the list of preliminary questions. By the way, can I throw in a couple more? It's all in there coming to mind. Absolutely. <laughs> but, um, we're, the, that's uh, what we're doing. Alternative balloon configurations. So, for example, um, there are things called super pressure balloons. Um, there are also zero pressure balloons. We, and just about every other how to do balloon um, groups, are always doing um, latex balloons, which we'll see tomorrow. So. Um, but there are other options. Options and uh, and uh, pardon the flood of email. I'll keep sending. You this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to send you a link to a really wonderful conference from um, a presentation someone gave at the UK High Altitude um, Amateur High Altitude you Balloon. Or, or, um, well, I'm on this other call because I'm not. I'm right, not exactly sure the name of okay. the conference, but he did an entire lecture on amateur super pressure balloons. Okay, Typically, okay. these are out yeah, well, actually, high tech we're stuff we're that's out of reach of amateurs, but yeah, he's um, giving, he's doing a lot of uh, ah, development cool. on it, and uh, so I'll send you that lecture. Sure, it's really important, and very encouraging. Excellent. And one other thing is alternate. This is something just for our sake. Yeah, Other yeah, people yeah. have done it, but alternate um, lift gases. Um, um, using we use helium. It's becoming pricier and pricier. We love good hydrogen. It's obviously safety issues with that. Um, and this is where I mentioned a former yes. Far Horizonite is researching it now, and he's done some tests with lighters and balloons and helium. <laughs> Excellent. Anyway. Um, I think let's wrap that question okay. there then. That definitely, I think, does some good stuff there. Um, are, what are the legacy requirements? And this is in terms of, like, um, are there older versions of the system that we need to play nice with and things like that? This is really an, a, a on the like the on ramp system. So I'm gonna guess that there are not many, if any, legacy requirements like, like off the on, shelf kind of thing. Well, saying, like with Shepard, um, the only legacy requirements we had was that our um, running all three major on that, right that our that the interface between our data collection system and the computer that was running that was actually being used to manage the tests those interfaces be standard so USB or Ethernet actually connecting the the end mm -hmm. and it, connecting the data acquisition system <coughs> and the computer I see and that the software on the computer be multi-platform to support all three of the major operating systems um, but we didn't have any other legacy requirements um, okay um, <coughs> you know this is um, a very 
open a sort of um, uh, te technology, right? Yeah. There are many options, um, but there are. I'm not sure if this is too vague, but obviously GPS. Um, um, you got to track the thing. You need some method of doing GPS, and you're always going to come back to the same issue. There's a very specific type of um, GPS. Um, I don't know what offhand um, uh, units that you can use. Mm -hmm. Most GPS units are um, made cut off to cut off below, at 60,000 yeah, feet, six or seven, um, yeah, like and that. then the 700 knots or like. And a certain velocity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there are 200 yeah. or something. Yeah, there's, there's, and so you can't just get off the shelf any GPS. You, there are a couple specifics for that. Um, I don't know if this is kind of, is this, where, where, you, no, because, um, where, yeah. the, the legacy thing <coughs> is if you've got some other thing that you're running that you need to interface with and you need to make sure that because it exists, mm -hmm. That you have to play nice with it. Okay. Um, and it seems to me that the it's way the balloon's being used, mm -hmm. it's pretty standalone. Yeah. Um, I it think does, it is an interface that, with any other stuff. A lot of that might be answered by the FAA regulations in a weird way. Yeah, that, yeah. That's probably even though it's not a technological driver yeah. as, or a technological yeah. um, um, issue, it's more of that's that's about the only limitation. Yep. There you go. I think that's a good place. So yeah. must comply with appropriate. FAA regulations, and I will come back later and... Did you, you already mailed us the link to that? Yes, I that was back the... in my inbox. Have regulations, perfect, so... Yeah. Um, it's pretty brief and... Uh, but you sent us actual attachments about yeah. where I can find them, okay. Yeah, um... I, so I will... I will Is that right? that, that's fine, I was just going to link here in the document if we... Uh, I can. I could dig them up if you need it, whichever is preferable. Let's. Uh, at some point, yeah. that would be great. Right this minute, it's not essential. So you prefer uh, links instead of documents? Uh, for this, because this is an online system, I'm gonna like. I like having the documents too for my personal use, mm -hmm. but um, I consider the links kind of authoritative in terms of. Okay. Well, that's that's something we can straighten out tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I'm not worried about that right this yeah. minute. Okay. Uh, so who's going to build this? <laughs> That's the next question. Who's going to build this? Whoever wants to. Um, yeah. Well, I, yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm joking, but not really. Um, it could be anyone. I mean, it depends on. So, so let's reframe reframe the question. Um, who? What do you need in order to be a bill? I assume this is more than a one person in the garage kind of project. Okay. Nice. Um, I see. Well, I mean, it, it depends on. In this particular case, I think for us answering the yeah. a slightly different variant matters this time mm -hmm. that you know was it a, a small team who's capable of building one of these yes um uh two three people minimum i'd say two people minimum actually um, um, um the guys from csnp which is california near space project I think it's called. And, and i'm gonna call it a volunteers could be, um, yeah. I mean, in our, in our case, yeah. Yes. Well, I think in, um, in general, I think the people that are going to be building this right now are primarily volunteers. They're makers. They're Mach 30 people. Mm -hmm. They're your people. Um, yeah, it looks like Greg Moran is following our no my notes right now, ah, so excellent. he gets going to get real time updates. And then I'm going to borrow language from Shepard. The design, the uh, designs will be open so that anyone uh, can uh, will be able to build and operate this if they want. You know, it appears as though two guys. Well, a lot of people watching. So I was going to say the people who broke the world record for the longest amateur balloon flight with the. Same setup. So they, it's a father and son son team from uh, San Jose, California. They're pool cleaners. Oh, and nice. They, they held hold the world record in that's cool. But all these sort of things for amateur balloon flights. And, uh, oh. So 
So what I had then added was uh, the designs will be open so that anyone would be able to build and operate at Far Horizons Project HAB. Mm -hmm. Anyone could put together a team to build and operate. Yeah, and there are you know, very low um, amount of skill requirements in a sense. There's a few, obviously. Um, Basic things. Sometimes it's hard for me to rewind to think of like what it would take if you had no experience with this, yeah. you know. Um, and there is some s scaling issues on this too, because if you just want to drop an iPhone in or tape an iPhone to a, a balloon, you know, you need a balloon, a helium tank, and a parachute, yeah. and uh, um, well, you're gonna have to insulate it. So. What I'm saying is there's the uh, a real simple way to do this, but it's not very effective for anything more than the glory of just doing it. Um, and so, but to do a real um, flight that you can have a platform that does uh, anything more than, yeah, yeah, um, and just try it for the fun of it, um, then you know, there are some skills involved. So, it, but it's not, it's not very specific. For the more advanced uses, what are the things that come to mind? First thing that really comes to mind is stepping up to the um, to uh, a project that would be more um, capable of doing more and is um, PAM license and doing um, GPS live tracking and having some communications experience uh, with with mainly um, like I said, two meter band is typically. Mm -hmm. It's used in that. So ham licenses is pretty, pretty much the first, how should I say, like a, um, the first next step. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Which just expands very, yeah. uh, what you can do. Anything else really come to mind? Um, electronics experience is quite helpful. Um, and I would say in a lesser extent, some um, engineering or physics experience, just being, so you have a little bit, you're not stumbling in the dark when it comes to some of the things you're going to run into. Um, remember what I mentioned at the beginning about the conditions you're under? Mm -hmm. If you're not familiar with that, if you're not expecting it, you're in trouble. Yep. So you figure by the time you're lifting something off the ground, you probably figure that out. So. Yeah. But still, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, how many do we want to build? And I'm going to jump on this one, I think. And basically, um, we want uh, teams to uh, be able to build one or more for their uh, systems. So that's um, the reusable components of the HAB. Yeah, like I said, the, the big stepping stone is getting over the first launch. Once you have the yeah. first launch, you have the components, you have everything else. Uh, for their own use. All right. Almost there, which is good because we're almost out of time. Yeah. What is the budget? And I'm going to comment here that real quick, um, yeah. Mach 30 is looking to get a version of the design that is as close to $200 uh, entry as possible, but um, we recognize that that may not be yeah. possible. And so yeah. that. You know, um, if you said 300 you probably. Well, and I do it. You know. There you go. Hold on yeah. a second. Uh, this uh, may be a bit low, uh, and so you're saying that we can um, if we go to three hundred dollars, that could be doable. And and I think I think if we're building on extremely known designs, you guys have a lot of practice with this. I think if if what we're doing is replicating something that you guys have a high degree of confidence would be successful, mm -hmm. that pushing the $300, although a significant 
budget increase from a standard kite, I think leveraging such well-known designs uh, would justify the additional expense. Um, whereas if you said, $800, I'd be like, we need to go one step before that and right. start with the designs yeah. for that and work to an $800 one. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you can, I mean, just balloon, parachute, uh, tracker, and um, supplies like helium. Yeah. Uh, um, it, that, that right there is over $300, about $300 okay. if, you, if you do your work. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And that's the minimum to Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll see if we can aim at the three hundred dollar level mm -hmm. and part of the day we'll be always reminding ourselves there's the what you really want and then there's what the first yeah. first time out yeah. the gate to demonstrate mm -hmm. yourself that this is something you want to keep doing, cost is, um, and try to kind of track them both. Mm -hmm. Uh timeline. So um, this is gonna be another one for me. Um, so what is the timeline? Um, Q Lab wants to get something up by the end of when, Jeremy? The end of June? I mean, the end of July. Not June, July. The end of July, right? Is it, they they were saying something about four weeks, and that was like a week ago. Well, so, anyway, no, I'm going to say by the end of July, but okay. because I, unless you can get Greg's attention and find out what day they want to launch. I'll see if he's watching the line I'm on right now. Saying by the time we walk out at the end of the weekend, yeah. he wants the design documentation. Okay, design documentation. Okay, I thought you said we knew that launching. already. I thought no, 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 we, no, 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 no. He, so it's, he's not helping. He's, yeah. he's working on it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, I'll keep you. While, while yeah. that's going on, the uh, the last question in the, in the round of initial questions is what waste products will be produced by the manufacturer in your operation? We need a lot of latex dropping onto the earth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> About you know somewhere near 2,000 grams of latex, <laughs> um, and hmm. go through a lot of batteries, a lot of living batteries. Yeah, that is relevant. Yeah, definitely it is. Um, De and most common build material is foam board, pink foam, you know, like kind of insulated board. Um, okay. And, you know, you go through a lot of that. That one of the things I can really think of. Uh, it's not a very wasteful process. process. Um, Greg, Greg is saying acquire, build, and assemble 18th through the 30th of June. Dress rehearsal 1st through the 7th of July, and then flight attempt 7th through the 14th. I mean, this, you'll see, I mean, you could do this. Um, if you just got the goods, and that's that sometimes that's the issue, yeah. and that's why I just yeah. asked Becky if we could came on to is our typical balloon supplier. We've tried other places as well. I'll get around to that later, but uh, they are notoriously you don't hear from them for forever. Oh really? And I don't know why. So sometimes their turnaround is um, not reliable. And later I'll when it comes to. Suppliers and things like that. I'll give you info about that. There are other 
options. Um, all right, so what is the, uh, let me find my question here. He wants uh, to do the flight attempt the 7th through the 14th of July. That's a nice wide window. We might be able to do it by 14th. All right. Got it. Okay. That is the initial questions. Uh, I guess I can close the meeting. Time-wise. Let me walk around a little bit. Uh, show you the cafes and yep. stuff. And, uh, cool. Should we go ahead and move this stuff, or...? Yeah, we can throw it in my office. Because I think we'll be done about here. Because we're going to have some lab time, and, well, after 